Hi everybody, especially my turtles. We are just crawling through the day, ready to accept, working on the slow recovery. It just works. Miss Joyce sent me this for my birthday and there's two things in life that you can know about me. I love my turtles and I love my sterling silver. Thank you, Miss Joyce. I even get compliments on it all the time. So I'm wearing it today. I'm going to go out and do some errands. I'll do anything for attention. I'm just such, such an attention whore. And um, I thought I'd take my little friend with me because it works. And I love, I, I just, well, I love Miss Joyce, but I also love the slow recovery of the older metabolism. And I'm so happy that I found my niche and I found my group and there's a lot of us that are here today doing the same thing, accepting that we spent a lot of years in the woods having those cookouts, those parties, those <laughs> never miss a bite of those sugars and grains, seed oils, crap. And now it's going to take a little while to come out of that because when we were 20, and we would burn through all that crap that we ate at night after the party, after the drinking. And then we went out to eat. That was what I did. I'm sure a lot of other people did too. Um, and so our metabolism took care of it and we got away with a lot. Gosh, I got away with a lot. So now here we are and we've got older metabolisms and the piper is asking to be paid. And so we go about our day we go about trying to do the best we can. We are ecstatic when there's a 0 0.2 weight loss. We are ecstatic when there's a zero weight loss, but no gain. That's how it becomes with our slower metabolisms. And it, it just is the way that it is. But we have permission to have all this wonderful food and fats and butter and heavy whipping cream and things like that that we can have on our journey. And so we can still manage to lose a little weight and enjoy the fats, the, the things that we can have that will take us from one hour to the next, one meal to the next, one day to the next. And we work on it all the time. After I started doing keto under 20, the best thing that happened to me after that was um, OMAD, one meal a day. I never thought I could do that. Are you kidding me? I was, I'm not gonna miss a meal. Three meals a day, three snacks, and maybe a Weight Watchers say, I say I save my points dessert at the end of the meal. Oh yeah, just keep keep the chair out. You don't have to pull the chair out from under the table. I'll just, I'll just resume where I was seated, right? And now it's totally different. I have my two coffees with butter and heavy whipping cream during my uh, 23, 24 hour intermittent fast, and then I'll have my OMAD and no regrets. Never thought I could do it. I kept my woman's prerogative that I could always go back to two meals a day if the one didn't work. There are some mornings that I wake up so hungry, it is like, feed me, feed me. And I start thinking that an egg and cheese omelet would be the best thing I could ever have. And I'll reconfigure my day and everything else. But then, yeah, reality hits. And I just, I'm very happy to just get excited to have my little Vita cup of coffee and um, with the butter and the heavy whipping cream and go on along with my day. And it just works. I, I have, I just have no regrets about the journey that took me here. And sometimes it does take what it takes and we are totally amazed. But the community is strong and the the older people that have lost weight and kept it off and are still here, even in maintenance, they prove to me that we are on the right track. And, and as an, another, you know, like step again would be um, giving up most of my veggies and just having the smallest of small um, 50 grams of, of my baby butter organic la lettuce Monday through Friday. It's nothing. It's like 1.2 carbs, I think, for 50 grams total. And um, that's what I will have. And, you know, it's just a semblance of what it used to be like with all of the veggies. Never thought that would happen. 
who knows? Maybe carnivory is in my future. I don't know. But I, I sure listen to a lot of women that now do it. And that's how I did it when I was low carb, high fat, listening to women that were doing keto under 20. So who knows? It could be in my future. I think I would be part-time carnivore though, because I love my keto pizza on Saturdays. And I do love my big green egg veggies that we have on Sundays. So I don't know, weekend warrior, you know, Monday through Friday carnivore, it could happen. But anyway, that's not why I'm here today. I'm here today to just talk about our journey in particular and our taking it slow, going at the turtle's pace, just steady and consistent and predictable is what I what, what I bring here to my channel to you. But I also try to teach that, that when you start a program and you are out of your mind with anxiety and hunger and craving, it isn't gonna work for me. Well, guess what? It could, just doing the same thing. You know, you it's Groundhog Day every day. And after a while, Groundhog Day becomes the comfort it becomes a place where you're excited that you're a groundhog because predictable is, it is the best um, reducer of anxiety for me. Predictable, steady, and consistent. Why not? Did it ever work for me to be spontaneous? You know, I've got some spontaneous people in my life and sometimes they have coffee and sometimes they don't. And sometimes they, you know, go out to eat. Sometimes they don't feel like eating. Those people are not normal to me. I am one meal a day between 2.30 and 3.30. Get out of my way. I'm having my meal. And that is that. And the butter and creamed coffee during the day, one at three in the morning or 11 at night if I'm working my overnight, and nine o'clock in the morning are what keep me, you know, it's just that, just gives me that little hum and it all works. Um, uh, somebody um, commented to me and um, she made me realize that, oh yes, it's happening for me too. This whole pumpkin craze, because it's October, here we go. It is tough. It's at the end of every aisle in the freaking grocery stores. It's on every other ad for IHOP and places like that, you know, the, and, um, and then for the coffees as well. It is a tough time. And this is the kickoff. I realize now that it doesn't start at Halloween. It starts like right now, you know, the end of September, beginning of October with, you know, pushing the pumpkin product. And it's like, wow, that's hard. And so I said to her what I'd say to myself, practice squinting, fast forwarding through those ads, that those ads aren't gonna change. They're still gonna show them with the stacks of things and, you know, have those things. And, and I admit that that was something that I did enjoy now that I think of it. And also, you know, squinting at the aisles and seeing all those things. Here, here's a cure. Turn it over. Turn that like box of um, K-Pods over for the pumpkin spice coffee and read what ingredients are in it. You won't see pumpkin anywhere. Don't even go to Starbucks to have your pumpkin latte. Not one bit of real pumpkin in it. It, it's just, it's the kickoff of the tough time of the year. And so squinting, fast forwarding, you know, just, just avoiding eye contact. <laughs> Isn't that funny? Like, look what happens to us, right? We have to avoid eye contact with pumpkin things. And, um, you know, just jo enjoy the pumpkin decorations and not the rest of it that goes with it. And if you're like me, I realized that my life and it was pretty much saturated with fall festival festival type of foods. I forgot all about it. And this woman just, this woman triggered me. And I think her name is Catherine. I love you, Catherine. And I'm so glad that you brought it up because uh, I'm going to post this because other people might already have that, the seeds, but is be, pumpkin seeds, is being kind of planted in our head. And I'm sure that, that it'll be really kicking in with more and more and more and more as we go along. And I want to avoid it. And, you know, even, even all of those other things that have the spices, you know, that they trigger me. Um, you know, I used to put a lot of like cinnamon type spices on things, in things, around things. 
And so I guess I am a pretty much fall triggered type of gal. Um, the fall scents and flavors and Yankee candles and all that kind of stuff. So I have to be very careful and mindful. Just I just have to be mindful and aware that this is a bigger <laughs> this is a bigger system than me. I just have to be aware and know that what I can handle and what I can't. You know, I'm not going to buy a car freshener from Yankee Candle that's pumpkin spice. I'm not going to buy a pumpkin spice candle. I'm not going to be, you know, figuring out how I can pumpkin fi some keto fied sort of dessert. It just won't work for me. It's not a safe place. And um, so maybe you weren't even thinking of it yet, you know, but today felt a little fallish. And then when Catherine commented, it's like, holy moly, yes, indeed. So I will be posting this and hoping that you, you also will find in your toolkit or put in your toolkit new tools to deal with this onslaught of the fall flavors that come at us. And it's tough enough that they come at us. And for some of you, you may not even realize that you're, you know, what you're craving was developed in a lab to taste like pumpkin. And that's disgusting to me. The chemical aftertaste, if I had one of those K-Pods right now, it would I would I would know it. I would just know it because I've gotten so used to real food that a chemical thing like that would be kind of gross in the long run. Might might taste good the first couple of sips, but I'd be dumping it. I just know that. And so I want you guys to be careful as well. It's here, it's it's here, it's here, it's upon us, alert, alert. Send out an amber alert. Where's Sarah's mind going? It's going into the pumpkin patch. She'll be out in a little while. Don't worry. Um, so just, you know, arm yourself. Learn what works. You need to be safe. Squinting, fast forwarding, and just no thank you. And those are the three tools that I will sharp, sharpen and put into my toolkit to get me through this kickoff of the five months of food. Here we go. And so buckle up, buckwheat, because it's going to be a ride. I will see you the next time. <laughs> this has been Sarah. Oh my God. Look out. She's on a roll. No, it's not a pumpkin roll. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you the next time. Bye-bye.